Well, I am, I am a lover of science. I, I love science and I love research. There is one thing that we must, we must grasp from the beginning. Research is not designed to prove anything. So if somebody says to you that research has proven, please believe me, they are completely and utterly incorrect. Research provides us with evidence and evidence can change as the years progress because we have new equipment, we have um, new ways of being able to visualize and look at things. And therefore we say, ha ha, we thought it was this way, but it is in fact this way. Now, I want the, your, the listeners, I want the Feldenkrais community to understand that I am truly a supporter of science and research. However, the map is the territory. So let me just explain that I loved, I loved that, that focus because it really helped me um, to reflect on biotensegrity and what it was I wanted to say to the Feldenkrais community. So imagine for a moment that somebody has provided us with a map. Now, this map is literally hundreds of years old. It has been contributed to by Professor this and Professor that. In this particular case, you know, Erastostratus, Galen, Harvey, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, um, Michelangelo. It has been uh, added to over you know, two and a half thousand years. Let's imagine that this map has been uh, dictated to verbally. So it explains using you know, beautiful words and vocabulary how to get from A to B. And in fact, let's even make it more beautiful. Let's say it's written on beautiful in parchment paper. My God, this map is just amazing. And it tells you how to get from, you know, from Dublin to San Francisco. You follow all the details and you arrive in San Francisco and I come along and I say to you, well, actually, you're not in San Francisco. And you say, what are you talking about? Look at all the people who have contributed to this map. Look at the language they have used, the vocabulary. Look at the detail that they've given to us. And you're telling us that we're not in San Francisco. And I'm saying to you, yes, because, and here's the problem, you, they all thought that they were in Dublin when they wrote the instructions. And in fact, they were not in Dublin. They were somewhere else. And so it doesn't matter how beautiful the descriptions, it doesn't matter the name of the individual or how clever that individual was. The facts of the matter is that we have gotten fundamental aspects of human anatomy and physiology, of living anatomy and physiology, of nature. We have gotten it wrong. And we need to correct that. And it's, it's not a far remove. So as you said a little earlier, Cynthia, we will not throw the baby out with the bath water. But let's stop for a moment and think about anatomy. Let's stop and think about the first telecommunication system. Let's think about the first automobile, the, the first locomotive train. And then let's think about anatomy. How has anatomy changed? I'm not talking about surgical interventions, surgical techniques. I'm not talking about, you know, um, confocal laser endoscopy. I'm not talking about these techniques that we can use. They're modern techniques and they're science-based. But the study of anatomy, that this is my biceps brachii, this is the origin and this is the insertion, that has not changed in two and a half thousand years. It certainly hasn't changed since the 15 or 1600s. Does that not seem a little implausible and unreasonable that it hasn't changed in all those years so that we've had the last word, the only word on anatomy? I really want to encourage people to think, open their hearts, open their minds, and let's invite in a new way of looking at the human body and a new way of describing the human body, living anatomy. Mm -hmm.